So anyway, this is starting a new month, and we have a new theme for the month. I'm calling it Great Songs on God's Playlist. And I got the old-fashioned jukebox up there, and you can push your number, and you can get the song you want. But the top song there that we have that we're going to be looking at today is the Fruitful Song. And it actually comes from the first of the Psalms. And Psalm 1 is actually like an introduction to the whole book of Psalms. And I'm not going to give you a study about the whole book of Psalms, but it breaks down into five sections, and the five sections follow the, the Pentateuch or the, the Torah, and each section has a, a one, the first section reflects Genesis, and the next section, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. But this is a kickoff Psalm, and it's short. And, and I think it's one the, that you can actually memorize, all six verses, but our memory verse in the bulletin is only the first two verses, and we'll try to squeeze those in at the end because I want to work on, on getting everything done in time here today. You know, if you had to choose between a fruitful life or an unfruitful life, the question is, which would you choose? All right, of course, you would choose a fruitful life, right? Right? Isn't that what you choose? Today, you will discover God's truth on how to have a fruitful life. That is, if you really want it. If you really want it. Because God lays it right out for us. He says here in Psalm, chapter, uh, Psalm 1, in the very first verse, he tells us that the fruitful life is a distinct life from the world. If you're going to have a fruitful life, you will not look like, smell like, act like, think like, do like the world. You will be different. He says here, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He does not take the wicked's advice. Now the term wicked here is basically the idea of someone who disregards the word of God, the law of God, the commandments of God. When you disregard God, you put yourself in the camp of the wicked. This person, who's going to be blessed, does not take the advice of the world. They take advice from God. Believe me, the world has plenty of advice to dish out. From everything on politics, everything on gender identity, everything on abortion or life. The world has plenty it wants to dish out. But the, the man who is truly blessed is distinct from the world because he goes countercultural in the advice that he takes. Second thing, nor does he stand in the way of sinners. Sinners are people who just don't measure up to God's mark. It means to fall short of what God has for you. He does not stand in their pathway. So he's not on the road of the group that is going on the broad path to destruction, he has chosen the narrow path that leads to life. Nor does he sit in the seat of the mockers. The mockers. These are those that scorn and scoff at, at you. Uh, they make fun of you. They call you Holy Joe, or you're a Bible beater, or something like that. You don't sit in your seat. Now, now, if you notice, there's a progression here, and I've got it. The man is walking. He's, he, he's on the path doing what the world would do, and then he stops. And, and it's now not that he's walking. He's standing in the midst of their pigsty. He's living. He's on their path, and, and, and he's living with them. And then we find that he's actually seated with them, and he's making fun of the Christians and the godly himself. There's a motion of halting here. This is something that the Christian should be counter to. In fact, that's what the next verse goes on to say. But his delight, now what really brings him happiness, what brings pleasure in the godly person's life is the law of the Lord. Now, the word law is Torah, and Torah's basic meaning is instruction. His delight is in what the Lord has instructed. 
Yes, the word is used for the Ten Commandments, Torah. Yes, it's used for the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. It's also used for the whole Bible, the Torah. It's used for commands, instructions, precepts, principles of God. And I want to talk about law itself, Torah. You see, I want to talk about the law, and i got a couple of railroad tracks here. Why do I have that? Well, you see, the law is kind of confining, the law tells you what you can do and what you can't do. Kind of like those railroad tracks. They limit you to what you can do. So, I have a question. When it comes to the law of the tracks, all right, here's my question. Is the tra train most free when it is on the tracks or when it is off the tracks? <laughs> Obviously, the, tree is, the, the train is most free to be what it's supposed to be when it is on the tracks. Really important point. Let me reiterate that. The law of the road. You guys all have your own law on the road. I've seen the way you drive. <laughs> but the law of the road. Here's the law of the road. The law of the road. Is the car most free when it is on the road or when the car is in the ditch? And you got the picture. The car is most free to go wherever it wants to go as long as it's on the road. But when it's stuck in a ditch, it's not free at all. So what do you want to do? You want to stay on the road. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense to me. Here's the law of the sea. All right. Is the ship most free in the sea or run aground? <laughs> You're getting the picture. I can tell already. The law is simply... God's instruction of where you ought to be. And when you follow the instruction of the Lord where you ought to be, you are the most free. You're not limited. You're free. There's the law of the vine. And Jesus said, my, <clears throat> my father is a husbandman or the vine dresser and, and I, am the, I am the vine and my father is a husbandman and, and you are the branches and every branch that bears fruit he prunes it that it might bring forth more fruit. And he says in verse 5 and 6, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Isn't that what we're talking about? Fruitful life. You want to have a fruitful life? You all said, yeah, I want to have a fruitful life. <clears throat> Apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoa. This is the law of the vine. You have to be connected to the Lord Jesus Christ to bear fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, <laughs> you sever yourself from the Lord. He is like a branch that is thrown away and is withered. And such branches are picked up and thrown in the fire and they are burned. You see, the Christian is most free when the Christian is following the law of the vine and is vitally connected to Jesus Christ. You have a relationship with him where you look into his word and you read and you hear him speak to you. You in turn then have a time of prayer where you pray to the Lord. You're so excited about this, it spills out of you. The Holy Spirit pours so much love within you, it just spills out of you so that you want to share it with others. And it's just flowing out from you. The Christian, when he severs himself apart from Christ, the fruitfulness shrivels up, dries up, and it vanishes. You see, Christianity is really not about keeping a bunch of rules as much as it is about having a relationship with the true and living God where you know when you do what he instructs you to do, he blesses your life with fruitfulness to do it. Because that's what he goes on to say. His delight is in the law of the Lord. So, what I'm trying to say is, you are most free when you delight in the Word of God. You are most free. Most free. You find out your purpose. You find out your meaning. You have joy and peace you have salvation, forgiveness, you have pardon, you have fellowship with God. You are so free because 
you delight in the law of the Lord. He goes on and he adds this. And, and on his law, he meditates day and night. That's why I have as our memory verse for this, this month, we have Psalm 1, verses 1 and 2. And uh, it's in your bulletin. It's not on the screen at the moment. But I want you to memorize it. Listen, you need to meditate, meditate. You say it over and over. You say it over and over enough until you have it memorized. And that's why we're featuring a memory verse every month. We had one in January. We had one in February. We have this one now. It's two verses in, in, in March. We want you to memorize so you meditate on the Word of God. You see, his delight is in the law of the Lord, not his law. He meditates. I know you probably shouldn't do it this way, but when I got the verse I want to memorize and I don't have it down, I kind of post it on my dashboard. Okay, I, when I stopped at a traffic light, I look at it, and then I start saying it. And then when I take off, I try to keep repeating it, keep repeating it. You know what? And while I'm driving, I'm meditating on the Word of God. You, you can do that too. You can put it on your refrigerator. You can put it where you're, you're shaving in the morning, on your mirror. You, can, you, you put the Word there and you meditate on it. You, so you delight in the law of the Lord and His commandments, His instructions, His precepts, His counsel. You, you do that. He delights in the Lord because here's why. You are destined to flourish if you do so. He is like a tree. The idea here is this tree is alive. He is like a tree that is growing. And he says, it's planted by streams of water. It's rooted. And the roots go and it's drawing uh, from the water stream that's going by. And, and the Bible says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love, when you're having this relationship of a time in the Word, a time in prayer, and it's, it's getting your roots deep, you're drawing the love of God, and that love of God is just going to spill out of you. You're destined to flourish. You're destined to flourish. He says, which yields its fruit in season. I like the old King James, which, which yields its fruit in his season or its season. But I believe that actually the, the suffix on that is his season in the Hebrew text. And the his season is God will eventually give you fruit in your life. Maybe not when you want it, but he will make those verses you memorize, that time you spend in his word, he will make it in his season actually bear fruit. And the fruit that it bears is the fruit of the Spirit that we covered in Galatians chapter 5. It is also the fruit of money in Romans chapter 15, 28. The Lord will bless you even financially. Wow. Hey, listen, the Lord will bless you with, and make you fruitful in service, doing good works, impacting people's life. Your, your life will be fruitful. Listen, he goes on and he says, and even the praise of your lips, it will spill out of your mouth. When you've got that love relationship going on with you and the Savior, you cannot help but speak about Jesus. I can remember my son when he ran into the girl that he was head over heels over, and all he could do was talk about her. <laughs> Why? Well, you remember that time. Some of our friends said uh, we were sickening to be around Diane and I when we were in we called the Gaga stage. <laughs> Head over heels. Listen, praise will just come out of your mouth when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It will just happen that way. Now, this one is thriving. It says its leaf does not wither. It doesn't wither. Why? Because he says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. The day of Jesus Christ is the rapture when he returns. And so he says, listen, what I've begun in you, uh, as long as you're drawing your, your sustenance from the, the living waters, as long as you got your roots deep and, and you're having this relationship with me, listen, you, you will... You'll be carrying on the good work. It will just keep coming. It'll just keep coming. You will, you will be producing fruit in your life. You'll be producing fruit in your life. Whatever he does prospers. Wow, 
this is thriving. This is thriving. Oh my goodness, this is thriving. It reminds me of Joshua 1 8. Then you will be prosperous and successful. <laughs> you want to be prosperous and successful? You need to be in the Word of God. You need to be in prayer, having relationship with the true and living God. <clears throat> That's the key to the fruitful life if you really want it. I just gave it to you. That's the key. It's the key. Do not let the book of the law d- depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. It's very simple. God has given us the rails. It's the Word of God. You read the Word. You do the Word. He blesses your life. When you read the Word and you decide, no, God, I'm not going to do your Word. You're the, you're the train wreck. Your life's a train wreck. You're, 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 you're the, the cluster of grapes that's been cut off and you're withering and you're dying on the side and you're saying, God, graft me back into the vine. Reconnect me. Connect me to Jesus. Why? Because there is the prosperous and successful life. There it is. That's the key to fruitful life. If you really want it. But if not, if you really don't want it, then you will continue in an unfruitful life, all shriveled up. Your life will be like, well, what's the meaning of all this? Why is everything in my life going wrong? How come I can't find a purpose in anything in my life? You're going to be aimless. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know why I'm here. You're all confused. It gets so bad, people don't even know what gender they are. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The unfruitful life of the wicked. I've got to define the wicked again. This way it's defined when this word was used in the Old, Ling, uh, old Bible, King James Bible, they, they defined it, departure from the rules of divine law. When you get off the tracks, this is what happens. You're just dust in the wind. <laughs> Not so the wicked. They are like chaff, chaff. I, I got this, the, the farmer there, and he, he, he's winnowing. He's, he's uh, taking uh, the grain that's been harvested, and, and he, he's actually... He's threshed it. He's broken off the external husks and and he's throwing it in the air. And the chaff is the outside husk of the grain that the wind blows away because it's really light. And the the, the kernel is heavy and it drops back to the ground. And he says, hey, the person who's derailed, your life is just dust in the wind. It's just blowing away. It's just blowing away. The wind just blows it away. Now, the obvious thing about chaff is the chaff is dead, where the tree was alive. The obvious thing about the, the chaff, it's rootless. It has no roots. It's rootless. It's also fruitless. There's nothing of value in it. In fact, later it's going to say, the only thing it's good for is to be burned. Burned. It's blown away. It's like, here today, gone tomorrow. Boom, it's gone. It's blown away. And it is burned. It is burned. If anyone does not remain in me, Jesus said, he is like a branch that is thrown away and is withered. And such, such branches are picked up and thrown in the fire and burned. You will be burned. You want to stay on the rails. You see, not only is the, the wicked in trouble like chaff, they're destined to fall. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment. On the, on the time of judgment, when you see a judgment day is coming, when you're going to give an account, and you're not going to be able to stand, that, that's in a positive sense, you're not going to be able to stand, you're, you're going to be brought down. Nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous... You're going to be found guilty, and he's going to say, depart from me, you wicked. I never knew you. I never knew you. They're destined to fall. And the wicked are doomed to destruction. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. He is looking out for you. His eye is on you. He's looking out for you. He watches over the way of the righteous. He's got his eye on your path. 
but the way of the wicked will perish. Whoa. You know what we got going on here? Look at this. It began with the verse saying, the blessed man, and it ends with the word perish, the perished man. Wow, we got two extreme opposites. He's setting up the whole book of Psalms. He's saying, if you abide in, in the, the word of the Lord, you do what, what God instructs you to do, you're blessed. If you don't, you're cursed, you perish. He's talking about being fruitful or unfruitful. It all comes down to what are you going to do with the word of the Lord, which all points to the Lord Jesus Christ. What should we make out of all this song? What should we make out of this? This is what we should do. See, I set before you today the life and prosperity, death and destruction, Deuteronomy 30, verse 15 says. Listen to this. I've set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. He says, it's one or the other. He says, see, I am setting before you the way of life and the way of death in the book of Jeremiah. Nothing's changed. Here's the whole point. Now choose life. What is the way of life? Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinner, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law does he meditate day and night, for he shall be like a tree planted by the river, bringing forth his fruit in his season. That's where life is. Delighting in the law of the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we've gathered today to get our bearings straight and refocus that we want to be among those who are blessed and not among those who are cursed. We want to be a people in the word, not who have set it aside. We want a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, not to be on the outside looking in. And so we want to choose life today. We want to choose Jesus. And perhaps there's someone here today who has never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and made him Lord of their life. I pray, Lord, that even now they'll say, Lord Jesus, I want the blessed life. I accept you as my Savior, my Lord. I'll dive into your word. I want you to speak to me. I know, Lord, when a person surrenders their heart to Jesus, that you forgive them, you acquit them, you give them life, you bless them, you prosper them, they're successful, they're fruitful. And Lord, we pray for that for a person today who would just call out and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, save me. Save me, O oh God. You will hear their prayer and you will answer. Many of us, Lord, we know you, but we've neglected our relationship. In some ways, we're just hanging on to the vine by just a thread. And Lord, I pray that now as we come to the Lord's Supper table, we will reflect on our own hearts and we will examine ourselves and, and we will confess that which we know we are all out of, out of your will. Lord, we will get ourselves back on the tracks following your instruction and with a confession so that we can come and partake of the elements in a worthy fashion. Bless us, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.